Hey everyone, this is Lomi, and this week I'm making the dress my patrons voted for. I'm making it for Feral because I always love sewing things for her, but I might try it on some of my other dolls too. I'm using crepe back satin for this dress, and because the material is slippery and I misplaced my rotary cutter, I have done the world's worst job of cutting this out. Fortunately, edges don't need to be pretty for the pieces to be functional. First things first, we'll be putting the back and back side pieces together with right sides together. You might notice sometimes when assembling patterns that they don't line up at the edges quite the way you expect, which means you might have little tips or tails hanging off the edge. That's because when you line up the pieces, the part that matters is that they line up along the stitching line. For this pattern, which has a quarter inch seam allowance, that means the line you're looking for is actually one quarter inch in from the edge. As long as the pattern pieces are the same length at that point, it doesn't matter if all the edges align. Sew the back and back side together, back stitching at the beginning and end of the seam. Because of my super messy pattern cutting, the bottom edge of my skirt doesn't line up perfectly, but that's not a problem. If there's any unevenness at the bottom edge, that can be resolved later on. As long as the top fits together well, it doesn't matter. I sew both back sections, and then finish the edges with a zigzag stitch. I also finish the long straight edge of the back piece with a zigzag in preparation for sewing this seam later. Next, we'll begin sleeve assembly. There are eight pieces for the lower sleeve, four linings, and four outer shells. Put the linings and outer shells right sides together to create four lower sleeve pieces. Sew along the short straight edge of all four parts first. I've cut this dress with really triangular sleeve panels, which is a slight difference from the printable pattern where the front edge is more shaped. Regardless of whether yours follows the pattern exactly or a more triangular shape like mine, you'll sew down the front edge of the four sleeve sections next. After all the sleeve sections are sewn, Clip the corner where the two seams overlap and turn the triangle right side out. You'll want to take these to your ironing board and press these panels flat. At this point, I had the great fortune of my camera eating all the useful assembly footage for the sleeve, so illustration time. The upper sleeve and two lower sleeve pieces should go together with right sides together. The trick is, the finished edge of the lower sleeve piece should fall in the middle of the upper sleeve's edge, with the lining folded out of the way. The second lower sleeve piece goes on as a mirror image, still with right sides together and the lining folded back. That way we can sew the green part to the upper sleeve, giving us a clean, finished split in the center. When sewing it down, keep the lining folded back and sew just the outer shell until you reach the seam where the shell of the lower sleeve and the lining meet. Backstitch there, then skip over to the other side and sew the other half of the sleeve down the same way. You'll see the lining fabric is still hanging loose. That's exactly how we want it. The lining can now be pinned to itself and sewn along the long diagonal edge, leaving an open section that will attach to the upper sleeve later. We need that gap to turn the sleeve right side out later on when we sew the outer shell closed. For now, we'll move on to the front of the dress. Fold the front side darts shut and sew them in place.
You can backstitch at the armhole edge, but the narrow center point of the dart, it's better to tie a knot so it won't be bulky. The center front panel is probably the ugliest cutting job I have ever done on a piece of fabric. I wanted to share it specifically because it's hideous. So if you're ever cutting stuff out and feel like your work won't look good because you can't even cut a straight line, I can't either. The front center and side front pieces go together with right sides together. There's a slight point at the edge of the neckline on the side front panel that you can use as a guide for where the seam should begin. Backstitch at the beginning and end of this seam, attaching one side this way and then the other. As I said in my video last week, I really wanted to use gold for the collar on this dress. Unfortunately, I didn't have enough material after all. So instead, the collar will be black. The yoke is four pieces, all made with outer shell fabric so it's the same on the inside and out. Two pieces should go right sides together and then sew down the straight front edge, back stitching at beginning and end. Flip these pieces right side out and press them flat. After they're pressed, finish the curved edge with a zigzag stitch just to hold the edges together as we progress. Because of the sharp curves of this piece, it's really hard to pin it in place. So instead, grab some thread and we'll baste it. I use red just for this video so my stitches can be seen. Normally, you would want a color that doesn't show in case you can't pull all the basting stitches out later. Fold the front of the dress in half to find the center and put in a pin to mark it. Put the yoke against the front with right sides together with the finished straight edge against that pin. Use loose temporary stitches to hold the front in place, stitching it into the curve of the neckline. Then repeat with the other side of the yoke. Once it's basted, sew it in place. This is so much easier than working with pins here because the stitches allow the material to flex. Now you can pull out the basting thread. Now that the front is complete, the back and front go together at the shoulder with right sides together. Sew the shoulder seam, back stitching at beginning and end. Then finish the shoulders with a zigzag stitch. Trim the loose threads and we'll add the sleeve. The curve of the upper sleeve goes into the sleeve hole. And because this is a steep curve, we'll baste this too, but I fit it with pins at first just to make sure it's nicely aligned. Then I run quick basting stitches and remove the pins before sewing. Anytime you have particularly sharp or steep curves, basting instead of pins can help a lot.
Sew the sleeve to the body of the dress, backstitching at the beginning and end of the seam. Sew in both sleeves this way, make sure they lay nicely, and then finish the edge with a zigzag stitch. With the sleeves sewn in, now we can close the sides of the dress. Beginning in the underarm where the sides of the front and back meet, put in a pin and pin the bottom edge of the sleeve closed. Make sure the lining is tucked to the inside and out of the way. We're just sewing the outer shell right now, since the lining is already closed. Then pin the side of the dress closed too. Close both sides this way, and then we'll start at the pointed end of the sleeve, sew all the way to the underarm, turn, and sew down the side of the dress. This edge should be finished with a zigzag stitch. You don't have to finish the edge of the lower sleeve though, just from the upper sleeve to the bottom hem of the dress. Close the other side of the dress the same way. I managed to put my pins in on the wrong side of this fabric. Some projects just go that way. Now we can finally turn the sleeves. Remember that hole in the lining? Now we can pull the fabric through it to turn the sleeve right side out, and then the lining can be turned and hand stitched to the seam at the upper sleeve, giving us a nice clean finish. Next comes closing the back. I had hoped to use a zipper for this, but shipping is taking forever, so I'll use snaps instead. If you want to use a zipper, you can refer to another one of my dresses for how to set one, and I'll link to that in the video description. Since I'm using snaps, I pin the back closed just beneath what will be the widest part of the doll's hips, and I sew just that section shut, backstitching at the beginning and end. I'll want to press that seam open before I go any further, so I'll go ahead and finish the hem so I can press that at the same time. To create the rolled hem at the bottom of the skirt, I run a line of stitches along the bottom edge one quarter of an inch from the edge of the skirt. This will help the fabric fold neatly, even though it's a circular hem. The fabric gets folded once at the stitches, and then folded again and pinned in place. This can take a while. Then just sew the hem in place. This too was going to take a little bit. Once everything is pressed, I'll finish the back of the dress by just folding the edge of the center back in by a quarter inch and sewing it down. 
I can do this in one seam by sewing down to the point where the back pieces join and turning the material at that point to go up the other side. From here, the back is done until I hand sew snap closures. The last part of construction is adding the collar. Like the yoke, the collar is four pieces of outer shell material. Two pieces go together with right sides together, and then I sew up one short side, across the long side, and down the other short side, back stitching at the beginning and end of the seam. Both halves of the collar get finished this way, and then I clip the corners and flip the collar pieces right side out. The two halves of the collar should be pressed flat, and then we can attach it to the dress. The collar and the body of the dress should go together with right sides together. The collar gets folded open so that the front side gets sewn to the dress. This method of finishing lets us have a finished edge on the inside too, because we can fold the collar in and over with the raw edge tucked inside. Because it's so small, I sew the collar by hand. The collar being in two pieces allows the yoke to be open in the front, but it also preserves the opening in the back, where the snaps or zipper will go. Ice is melting kind of fast, but at least the water has ice in it. Oh, thank you, baby. That's very thoughtful of you. I appreciate that. Since Evie has been out of school, she spends a lot of time with me when I'm working on projects. She likes to hang out and play while I sew, but my studio gets pretty warm once it heats up outside. She's such a thoughtful little girl. I thought she'd gone to get one of her other toys, but instead she came back with my water bottle. Isn't that sweet? With the collar sewn to the body of the dress, I turn it upright and flip the raw edge to the inside, then sew the edge closed with a hidden stitch. The longer you sew, the easier it gets to do a stitch like this, and eventually you're able to do a hidden stitch pretty quickly, catching both sides of the fabric at one time. Now that the dress is assembled, I can pick some trims and hand stitch them on for a little extra interest. I'm determined to get that gold, so I use an assortment of gold braids and trims on the edges of the collar and yoke, and also on the edges of the sleeves. All that's left is making her a sash, but I know I want that to be gold, so that'll have to wait for fabric stores to reopen. That's all for today though. Thanks for watching. Bye.